19. Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 19 in verse 2. Proverbs chapter 19 in verse 2. Proverbs chapter 19 in verse 2. And this morning I'm talking about I'm talking about four essential qualities for singles that are serious and want to get married. That means that if you want to get married, you should develop these qualities. That means if you're dating someone that doesn't have these qualities and they're not willing to de develop it, then you should be willing to call it a quit. Glory to God. All right. Proverbs chapter 19 in verse 2. Why am I very passionate? So all of you that are married here, the teaching would relate a lot to the single in the fourth service throughout this month. Um, someone says, but I'm already here. So this is what I want to think about. You will have neighbors, friends, family, friends that are singles that you could, um, you could pass the message to. So this would be a good time to just learn that. The reason why I'm passionate about teaching this is because when I was going to, you know, when I was going to, when I was single, a lot of the teaching in church about relationship was very challenging. It was very funny, you know. Um, the, the major concept was the fact that if you married the will of God, you will never have problems. But now, time has gone from when I got born again. All of my friends that married the will of God, loads and loads of them are divorced. And you finally ask yourself, oh my God, I thought they married the will of God. Praise God. All right. So, let's look into this together. Yeah, let's look into this together. Proverbs chapter 19 in verse 2. The Bible says this, The soul that be without knowledge, it's not good. And he that hasted with his feet sinneth. Verse 3 says, The foolishness of the man prevented his ways, but his heart fretteth against the Lord. Can you give me this in the living Bible? Can you give me this in the living Bible? Glory to God. Let's look at this in the living Bible. It says, Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Hasty people make mistakes. What I've discovered about relationship is this. A lot of people are in a hurry to get into a relationship. But a lot of people do not have preparation or knowledge. So when you talk to the average person that is single and say, what have you studied about the relationship you are in? They would really tell you, maybe nothing. Maybe they've heard one or two sermons, but they've not studied anything. And that leads to all the trouble that we have in relationships. So when you're a single person, you know, I want you to think of how you're going to develop yourself for what you're going to be as married. Let me ask a question. That would be good. If I want to make pounded yam, what do I need? Yam, etc. Most times, the problem with marriages is this. People want a jollof rice marriage, but they choose a pounded yam husband. Let it sink in. People want what? A jollof rice marriage, but they choose what? A pounded yam husband. And they begin to work on how to turn a pounded yam husband to what? To a jollof rice. Let me tell you something. If your dream is to become a model that is a lingerie model, you wear bikinis and all of those kind of things, marrying a pastor should not be your vision. Yes or no? No matter how much you are in love, you should tell yourself that it's either I will give up my dream or marry this person. Because they don't go hand in hand. You can't marry a pastor now. Just imagine you marry one of our pastors and there's a church that as they're driving on the street, you're your production comes out and you're wearing lingerie, just bra and pants, and someone says, that's our Gio's wife. <laughs> it doesn't work. So, the question is that people make those decisions because they really fear there may be nobody for them eventually. Glory to God. 
All right. So the Bible says enthusiasm without knowledge is no good at all. Um, so one of the advantage of being single and what's one of the things that will help you when you want to get ready for these things is to be able to get a lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge. You know, unfortunately, a, little, a lot of ladies get knowledge. A lot of guys do not value relationship knowledge. But even the ladies that get the knowledge, as soon as they find themselves in that situation, they throw away the knowledge. Because their emotion overtakes what they know. And they forget what they know. And you'll be like, why are you doing this? And they'll be like, oh wow, you know, I, I, I knew better, but I did what I did. Alright, so let's go. So what are the four essentials? Religion? Essentials. Judges chapter 9. Quickly. I love this. Judges chapter 9. It's, a, it's quite a read, but please pay attention and don't lose focus. Judges chapter 9, verse 8. Judges chapter 9, verse 8. The Bible says the trees went on time. The trees went forth to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. And the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness? Wherefore by me they honor God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees. And the tree said unto the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake all my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the tree? Then the tree said unto the vine, Come and reign over us. And the fine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then all the trees said unto bamboo, Come and reign over us. And the bamboo said unto them, If in truth ye shall anoint me king over thee, come and put your trust in my shadows. If not, let fire come out of the bamboo and devour the cedars of Lebanon. It's a very, it's, it's a parable. And why this parable is very important is this. The trees were looking for a king. So they began to move from one to the other. What I wanted to notice is this. The palm tree said, I can't do that. And he explained why I couldn't do that. He said, I can't do that because that's not what I'm built for. The major thing I wanted to say is this. Before there can be growth, there must be health. Or health, growth can become unhealthy. Let me break that down in a very simple way. Not all growths are wonderful. Someone say hallelujah. Yeah. Because if you are not healthy and you grow, your growth is going to become a problem. Not all growth are healthy. So before you say that I want to date someone, I'm looking for someone to date me, the first question you want to ask yourself is that am I healthy? Or else, when you date someone, you will just be adding to their problems. You will add to their problems and you add to what? Your own problems. So the Bible says in this story, they were asking on the bamboo. And they were asking on the trees. And because the tree knew themselves, the tree says, this is a great opportunity for promotion. But I'm not going to take promotion because what? Because I'm not prepared for this. So the question is this. If you... A single person, what are the four essential things you need to know that will be good for mine? The first thing is, <laughs> the first thing is this, is self-discovery. Let me say it this way. Everyone look at me. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh -uh. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Self-discovery precedes spouse discovery. Did you hear me? Self-discovery precedes what? Spouse discovery. If you don't know who you are, you will not know who to choose. Self-discovery precedes. This is a problem of people that marry very, very young. As they keep growing older, then they become somebody else. And they wonder that if I had a choice to marry again, I might sure I will pick this person. How many of you have had friends like that? The, okay, how many of you have had friends like that? Okay, who can tell me a story? Maybe that's a way to start. Maybe that's the way to get all of us. Who can tell me a story? The lady in glasses. Tell me a story. Yes, tell me. Yeah. There's a, there's a guy on the left. Yeah, there's a guy on the left. Behind you on the left. Yeah. Tell me a story. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, I had a friend. They had gotten married right out of school. Right? And then they dis she discovered, like, um, her career path. She had the tangenti to grow higher or faster in career. But the guy was stifling her because he could not 
deal with someone that was that big, like career-wise. So every time it became a problem, she had to travel for this. There were opportunities for promotion that she could have taken. She had to step it down because the guy would not be okay with it. Okay. So we have a problem with it. Eventually, they had to separate and they divorced. Wow. And then Eventually, she, they had to separate. Yes, and then she is some big madam now, and he is, I don't know. She's my friend. I don't know. Oh, okay, good. 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 The major thing you will notice is this. By the time the guy chose, he chose on where he was, not where he was going to. Please, the, ne the next lady. There's another lady with glasses. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, this has to do with my sister. She got married when she was 16. It's not like she wanted the marriage, but she got pregnant. And my mom, being the real African woman, she forced her to get married. And over the years, my sister has wow. corrected that marriage because it had to do with um, domestic violence, abuse. Yes, she gave birth to four children for the man, but even till today, the marriage has not been the same. Like, it's been ups and down. Five what does your mother years. feel right now? The last time we had a meeting in the house, she came to my mother and she was always telling my mother, now you put me for this condition where I did. That's always her statement. She goes, say, anything where I do today, now you cause them. And my mother really, really regrets that. Your mother really regrets? Yes. That's why no matter what someone was supposed you to do, make up your mind what you want to do. The reason why is that when you see the benefits and when you see the sorrows, you can say, I was the one that what? Chose this. Sorry, sir. Can I say something else? Yes, please. Okay, even after she got pregnant and gave birth to that child, after two years, then the man wasn't forthcoming like he wants to marry her. But my mom was still insisting that you must marry this man. She you work out, go. You go marry him. The, during that period, she had another person, another relationship that she wanted Hold on. To. Is Father Kemi here? Father Kemi, are you here? Wave. Father Kemi, are you here? If you're, if you're waving, you're here. Come, come. Father Kemi, come. Come, I want to ask you a question. Continue, continue. So, I, my mom was like, you know, go go for this one. No, you won't go here. Now, this one where you don't born for now, you go stay. So my mom practically forced her into that marriage. And today, my sister is not the same again. My God, that is so painful. Please excuse me. I, I want to ask her a question. Okay, I wanted to ask her because I wanted to know if she could share. Father Kami is here. She, she's a single mom that is going to get married soon because she's engaged. <laughs> Where's your son? Where's your son? Come around, go to the back. I want to show somebody. <laughs> go to the back. I, I wanted to see her. Look at her. Look at her. Go back. What's his name? Ade. Ade? Ade Jumovi, stand up. No, no, don't feel shy. It can, it, I know it can enter into the ground, but don't feel. Camera capture. Transmit. That is our son. That is our son. So I'm just saying, look at her. Tell us the story. And, and, and the reason why is that having a child with someone is not the reason to marry them. See, don't use one mistake to correct another mistake. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm a pastor. This church doesn't talk like this. Oh. Church will say, if he impregnated you, he must marry you. But that's not in the Bible. So, you will use one mistake to what? To correct another mistake and not have a whole life of mistakes. That lady that testified now, you'll be surprised that 
maybe her sister will hate that their firstborn. Because she was what brought her into that marriage. How did you navigate this when you got pregnant as a younger girl? Yeah. She can, please, will you hold it close? Okay, so I said I got pregnant at 21. I was 21 years old. Of course, I was young. My mother asked me, what do you want to do? Do you want to marry this man? I said I wasn't sure. And that was the honest truth. I wasn't sure. And she didn't push me. Of course, she wishes I was married. She wishes that didn't happen when I was quite young. But it happened. And we just had to go on with life. It wasn't going to stop my career. It wasn't going to stop my business. It wasn't going to stop my education. I just kept pushing to what I wanted to become, not tie my future or tie my life to the pregnancy. So I just kept pushing, not tying my decisions to the current situation I was in. So that should what everybody should do. Mistakes will happen, but your life should go on. It shouldn't be the end of everything. I, I want us to appreciate. You know, we're clapping for you today, but I've known you for over 10 years. And it's been a journey. It was rough. I want to say it because because it's good to see you flying. You're engaged now. I, I know you're nervous because we didn't discuss this before. Yes. So so tell us how rough it was, and now you got by. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, on was it Wednesday? You were talking about how you were going through a lot on past years. This was the moment he was tutoring me. He was pastoring me how to be strong, and I was shocked to hear when he was saying he was actually going through a lot. This man right here changed my life. I'm sure a lot of people know me. Like, I was a shadow of myself. I've, like, nah, I can't even explain. I can't. It, it was so bad that I couldn't pay school fees. It's right here. I'll come to him and say, Pastor B, I want to pay school fees. First time, I don't have money. Come and pay my son's school fees. I was always running to him, running to people. This is me. I have my own business. I have stuff. I pay salary now. I'm getting married. My son is in year four. He's graduating from Pan Atlantic next year. I'm grateful. It was rough, but I didn't give up. He's standing right there. He would tell me, Fadi Kemi, you can do all these things. You can achieve it by yourself. It will push me to even dream about what I can't think I could achieve. And I did it. And I did it. And I'm still doing more. I'm still going to do more. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Praise God. You, you know, sometime as a church, you know, like, Sometimes all these things get emotional. <laughs> oh, you know, Wednesday I struggled because, you know, I mean, I could see this one coming, but Wednesday I didn't even see that coming at all. So sometimes when I see it coming, I brace up myself. Sometimes as a church, we never tell you, you never see why we do what we do. But I hope that in this series, you can see a lot of the stories. You can see a lot of the stories. And, you know, let me just... This part aside, if you do not lead in this church, you need to find a way to lead. The kind of fulfillment I find from hearing these stories is more than what Dangote has. And these are the stories I hear every day. Someone sent me a story every day. Someone sent me a story every day. Thank you for you and say something. But the reason, but this is the reason why we do this. And this is the reason why our church approach is different. You may, you may expect something else from a church or a church because the focus of our church is not maybe a large crowd. Is really changing people. And that's why you come to a service and they say, take a microphone. Because I want to know, what I'm saying, is he hitting you the right way? How can I respond to the question that you have? But back to what we're teaching about. We just, just to slide back. And all of you online, the same thing. See, especially all of you that are abroad, because sometimes people that are international, there's a case of a lot of single mother, mothers in some other countries. You cannot put your life on a hold because of a mistake. And every time I see her, I remember, I remember, I remember the day she was broke. I remember, you know, and you'd be surprised. I would ask her, you know, even till up to last year, I would say, hey, Father Kevin, do you need some money? Because she, then she stopped asking. The other time she was, then she stopped asking. Then I didn't know if she stopped asking because she's now a bigger girl or she was just respecting the fact that she's growing. And I'll say, do you need some money? Do, you, do we need to settle something for you? I said, no, Pastor B, I'm really fine. Then I will ask again. Then, you know, then she, one day she said, Pastor B, what is your own account number? You know, then I said, okay, this has changed. I said, this has changed. What is your own account number? I said, this has changed. 
And, and, and in my house right now, I have this automated gate that opens by a remote. I could even afford it. And she paid. She and her fiancé paid for my automated gate. Why am I saying this to you? A mistake can, does not have to ruin your future. And church people, please, can we stop judging? Yeah. And instead of us judging, can we pick up napkins and support one another? Oh, let me tell you something. Because she got pregnant to wedlock, she's the devil, right? What about all of us that did abortions? Church people, what is wrong with us? We will judge the one that chose to carry the baby because she doesn't want to kill an innocent child. Yet, we don't judge the one that what had the abortion. Do you know how many girls under the sound of my voice right now have done seven abortions? And when they see the one that has the baby, they say, oh my God, she's so careless. Be careful. Just remember that God sees everything. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let's get back into the teaching. That was a great diversion right there. You know, but so what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. One of the first skills you need to have when you want to date is that it's self-discovery. You must know yourself. It's difficult to... The Bible says in Amos 3.3, can two work together except they agree? It's difficult to ask someone to come along to where you do not know. So you meet someone. Okay, he's a great person. But where is he going to? You meet someone, she's a great person. But where is it going to? The reason why it's difficult to follow someone is, and, and that's why some of you, when you date, I'm confused. Because you date different kind of people. And I'm wondering, why are you going to? How come your date does not have a pattern? You date a musician, then you date a pastor. Then, I'm like, then you date a lawyer. Then I'm like, well, why do you date all these people like this? But it pointly clears out that you've not discovered who you are and where you're going to. Because if you discover who you are and where you're going to, when you date people, they will have a pattern. One of the patterns we'll see is, is oh, date people that aligns with your future. But before they can align with your future, your own future must be very clear to you also. I love the way my friend would say it. My friend said, that there's a lady that wants to have a singing future. She's dating two people. One is Michael Jackson, and um, one is Mike Tyson, and one is Michael Jackson. Who should she date? Two of them are famous. Two of them are rich. Is it she should eventually date Michael what Jackson because he has a singing future? There are some things that don't just go with your future. Settle for it. And wait, what your future looks like will determine where you look for your husband. When you are looking for your wife in club, who will you find? Because this is a question of clarity. The major thing is this. A lot of us have not defined what clarity is to us. This is the kind of future I want. And when you know the kind of future I want, this is the thing. This is the kind of future I want. Number two, this kind of future I want. This person, what will it be right now? Now for some of you, what you will see is that you will see a pattern of progress. I don't believe in dating potentials. Because potentials may not manifest. What do I believe in? I believe in dating patterns. What is pattern? The Bible says, see it any man diligent in his business, he shall stand. That means even if he's doing small, he's diligent. I see the pattern. I see the pattern. I see the pattern. I see the gradual pattern of success. Self-discovery is important. A lot of people have made mistakes. And let me say something to you. There's a new term I use this morning. I call it useless dating. Useless dating is dating for dating's sake. That's why, that's what keeps people single for a long time. I'm not saying when you meet someone, you say, do you want to marry me? That's what I'm saying. But at the end of that thing, you must know that this person can lead to marriage. So, why a lot of people are single is that they engage in useless dating. They know it leads nowhere. But they are there. And the person takes two or three years of their life and moves on. And another person comes. 
Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, self-discovery. So, how do I do with self-discovery? The first one is self-awareness. Self-awareness. During this teaching, a lot of you have discovered things you never knew about yourself. Yes or no? What have that done? Self-awareness. What are some things you need to work on? What are you good at? What should you work on? I remember when I was going to get married, my wife was way developed, was way more developed than me emotionally. You know, and my wife asked me a question. He says that, what do you want out of this marriage? I said, love. I said, what does love look like to you? I said, I don't know. Love. But the reason why I was answering that way was because I was not emotionally matured. I didn't know what I wanted. The question is this. Once you discover yourself, can you write what you want out of your family? Can you write what you want out of your marriage? You just keep saying, I want someone to love me. What does that mean? It has no meaning. Where are the people that want what they know out of life and marriage? Let me see. You know what you want for marriage. You, you know. Give them microphone. Shall we they know? Give them microphone. You see, the hand will disappear now. Because they don't know. Shall we you know? Give them microphone. If you, have, if you know, come and stand here. Come and st come outside. If you know, shall we are the one that say you know? Come and stand here. Come and stand and come and defend. Bring the microphone. Here we can be giving them. Hey, whoa. You raised up your hand at me. Hey, come and stand and come and defend you. Yeah. What? Your shoes, yeah, remove your shoes and come in your bare feet. <laughs> remove your shoes. It's okay. Remove your shoes. Praise God. We're, we're patient. <laughs> and all of you here are praying for marital breakthrough. And they say, what do you know about marriage? I don't know. <laughs> All of you that are dating, should I ask another question? Why must it be him and another him? Why must it be her and another her? Yeah. Yeah, what do you want? No, look into the camera. No, just look into the camera. We're not shy now, church. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so um, I have a couple of things that I know that I want from my marriage. Um, first off, one thing I really want for my marriage is vulnerability. What? Right. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yes. Um, you don't find a lot of people that properly... What does vulnerability mean yes. in your marriage? Okay. So, um, vulnerability in my marriage means that my husband trusts me completely, right? Um, I'm, I'm a reflection of him, and he's a reflection of me as well in some so ways. So, if, if, if he happens to steal from the office, he can come and tell you his story. I said in some ways. That's why I said in some ways. As that's why I said in some way. I don't understand. You want partial vulnerability. My sister, I don't want vulnerability. See, if you want, if you're a vulnerable wife, your husband will kill somebody, you cover up. Go and read the story of Jesse Bell and Ahab. Ahab said, I want to take, I want to steal his land. He refused me. Just by saying me, I will kill him for you. The reason why is this. This, this is the reason why. I never said your husband will steal. But I'm not saying that. Do you know exactly what you want? Can you handle what you want? So you see, as I began to ask her what she wanted now. She said, I don't want it fully. I want it partially. Vulnerability means that he can come and say, Babe, last night... I got drunk and I slept with Shinequa. <laughs> and I can hide it, but I do not want to anything. I do not want anything in between us as a secret. So I've come to tell you. And if you're going to be a vulnerable person, it's going to hurt. But you're going to have a system to deal with that. Glory to God. Let me say something to you all, all of you. See, like I said, you can't want to make your love first marriage and use yam to make it. If you don't know the kind of marriage you want, you can't know who to choose. Because you don't choose the marriage you want. It's who you choose that determines the marriage you want. 
And not just that, it's even who you are that determines marriage you want. So if you want a vulnerable marriage, the question is that are you yourself as a person, what? Vulnerable. Because you cannot give what you don't have. Self-discovery. If you're going to be vulnerable, are you vulnerable? Yes, I am. You are? Okay. So your last relationship, he knew everything. Yes. He knew everything. Even when you were broke, he knew about your family pain, he knew about your emotional baggages, he knew about. That's good. And when he told you his own, you didn't freak out? No, I didn't actually, because my baggages were a lot. So it's a lot. It were, they were a lot. I've dealt with them, but they were a lot. So they were a lot. I, yeah. Okay, that's good. Let, let's appreciate her for that. Praise the Lord. So, what are the qualities for single? The first thing is self-discovery. And let me say something to you. And that's why you need to have a lot of relationships. When I say love relationships, you need to be with a lot of people. So that the reason why is that some things you will not discover about yourself except your friends point it out to you. Do you know a lot of selfish people don't know they're selfish? No, no. If it's no, say amen. amen. Wow, you know that? I'm telling you, a lot of selfish people don't know they're selfish. But if they're able to be honest with themselves and expose themselves to a lot of relationships, they're going to hear over and over again that you are quite selfish, that you are quite selfish, that you are quite selfish, that you are quite selfish. Glory to God. So the first thing you want to develop as a single person is self-discovery because self-discovery precedes spouse discovery. If you don't know who you are, you cannot choose who, you cannot choose who you want to marry. Glory to God. What do you need to determine? You need to determine your purpose and your vision. Your purpose and your vision. Your, your purpose and your vision. So, for example, right now, I knew I was going to become a pastor. See, I cannot marry a woman that is jealous. Because, you know what happens to me when I wear white shirts? You know, you, many of you don't know why I don't wear white shirt. Because once I start outside here, all the girls put makeup on my shirt. I'm telling you, they just put makeup, lipstick, you know, all those things just stay on my shirt. So just imagine I have to get to him and explain to my wife every Sunday. Ah, babe, no, it's not like that. Too. You know, that's it. Whose makeup is this? I say, I don't know. Say, you don't know. It's even four on your shirt. Did you do four people? There are some, there are some people you want to marry, you know you must share. Doctor. If you, if you marry a doctor, you are going to share. If you marry a politician, you must share. There are jobs that you choose and you know your husband or wife will be absent. Nurse. Because they do shifts. Pilots. Cabin crew. Actors and actresses. If you don't have enough self-esteem, don't marry an actor or an actress. Just like them from afar and say, I can't handle you. <laughs> Praise God. So self-discovery, self-discovery lets you know what you're very good at and what you're not very good at. Praise God. So the first quality of a single is self-discovery is that you know what you want to do. You know, and you also need to know what you like and what you hate. The ba See, when I got married, I wasn't emotionally matured. And I will tell you the truth. I was, I was spiritually okay. I wasn't emotionally matured. You know, as a matter of fact, I was upset with my wife about some things. And I could not tell. I, I didn't find the words to explain. Because my mind, and this happens to a lot of guys. My mind could not capture the emotions. Talk less of putting a word on it. So, I struggled. My, my wife would tell me exactly how she feels. I would be very unhappy, but I can't tell her exactly how I feel because I didn't have the words to describe it. And because I couldn't tell her exactly how I feel, she could not improve. So she kept hurting me. And I was hurting some more. And over time, I, I would just explode. Bah! In a very, very nice way. I would just explode. Glory to God. Who knows what I'm talking about? How many people are married here and you found it very difficult to express yourself? Or maybe you were dating. You don't know how to really express. You know, and you know my wife. My wife can really like talk her way through. So even when I have like a word to describe what I am going, 
my wife now begins to engage me verbally. My temperature of my head will just be going higher, 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 higher. I will just say, I've agreed. <laughs> Glory to God. But over time, as I began to develop emotionally, I began to understand, oh, this is what I feel. And what I feel is different from what I know. And this is exactly what you did. And this is how it connected to me. And please, don't do this again because I feel this way when you do this. Let me tell you one of the things I struggle with. I just struggle with the fact that my wife would take my t-shirt and wear it to sleep. And surprisingly, my wife used to take the expensive ones. You know, you know when you have t-shirt, there are some reserves. Like when you want to buff up, the day you want to feel special. You, and those are the ones I leave. But those are the ones that my wife will just take. She just take and sleep with them. You know, and when I will see it, I will just... I, don't, I will just feel... Ee. But I did not know how to tell her because it was not as if the t-shirt is silver or gold. So I, I, you know, as I grew, I just said that, you know what, I feel very uncomfortable. And, you know, uncomfortable is not just a word. I actually feel as if a bit belittling for me if you take my t-shirt and wait to sleep. Because I myself don't even treat my t-shirt that way. She doesn't need to understand what I'm saying. Is how I feel. Sometimes feeling doesn't make sense. Is it not true? Yeah. Exactly. But for a long time, I could not put that thing into a phrase. So, we'll just be going. Maybe she said, let me go sit and come down. Well, I'm very happy. She just come down. Just come in my t-shirt. And she has already sat down on it. She just, why did your mood change? And I cannot tell her that it's t shirt So, for, for example, now, when I'm doing my spiritual activities, I don't like disturbance. I don't like when I'm praying, reading Bible, someone talking to me. Me, oh, I never say you. So, you know, I, I don't like the fact that on Saturday night, you ask me for anything or touch me for anything. No, Sunday is the day of the Lord. It, it doesn't even have to mean that it's right or it's wrong. Because when we say meeting each other's needs, they say there are five love languages. I agree. But there are personal languages to people, personally. What is important to you as a person may not be important to me. And the, the way you know is that you must discover. This is why relationships have um, this equilibrium. The person that has the need cannot articulate his need and cannot present his need to the partner. So the partner does not know the need and does not know how to meet the need. You need to be honest with yourself. Honey, food is important to me. What am I important? Ah, by two o'clock, food was on the table. It may say you like food. That's their problem. But you know what is important to you. Is it not true? You would say, honey, if you love me, you love to love me with money. And it's not about materialistic. It's just the fact that if you can really spend on me, I just feel happy. You know the problem? Most girls don't know how to communicate that. So they communicate themselves as materialistic. But let me tell you what I've noticed. What most girls are really saying is that all of my future is attached to you. If I trust you, hope me and your children will not suffer financially. Oh, thank you. Why can't you say it? Because that's what you're trying to say. Is that not what you're trying to say? Why not say it that way? Why do you make your Gucci back and leave it on shoe? Because all, all of a sudden, it's now about Gucci back and leave it on shoe. And what you really need is that you are testing his financial capability. You are testing his willingness to spend on you. You are testing, you are testing, you are testing it. But you just need to say, honey, let me tell you something. It's not about the Gucci back and leave it on shoe. It's a fact that I just want to know if I have a crucial need in my life that is financial, that you can support me. And you can support me within, number one, that you have the capacity. And number two, you have the willingness to support me. So instead of them to say that, they will be pointing you to spend. Instead of them to have a discussion. And you'll be like, you know, when you buy all of these things, it's a way to show to me that you're willing to do it. Healthy relationship expresses their needs. Healthy relationship does what? Expresses their needs. 
All of you that are married here, you will tell your wife how you like sex. You will say, honey, you don't make noise enough. Increase the volume. Pepsi, increase the volume. This one will be doing, and you'll not be doing as if you are in Japan. <laughs> One pastor, one pastor was telling me that when they got married, he and his wife will have sex, and the wife just say, when they're having sex, I say, God bless you, my man of God. <laughs> he said, when the man is aggressive, he said, God increase your anointing. <laughs> Real life story. Real life story. Guess what? I thought it was weird. So I was talking to some girls and I shared it with them that imagine what this person is. One girl said, I don't know what's wrong with that. I think it's perfect. Someone, someone I knew, Gen Z, I said, really? The girl told me, say, Pastor B, in the peak of your ecstasy, when you are the most vulnerable and you are pure, all you are saying is that God bless your ministry. Is that not a deep prayer? The way we interpret facts differs from person to person. So the first thing is this. Before you ask someone to date you or marry you, have you discovered yourself? Do you know where you're going to? Let me tell you what vision looks like. Let me get someone, let me get a lady to come. One of the ladies, will you come? Is there, um, can I get the lady in white here come? No, no, just let her come. I look towards the two of you. Two of you wore trousers. You know, just climb up. You know, you don't need the microphone. This is an old illustration I used to do. This is what vision does. Just stand here. This is what, when you discover your vision, this is what it does. So, I want to date this girl. What's your name? You have the microphone. What's your name? Chidima. Chidima. I want, I want to date her. And now we're dating, but we're apart. But I told her that the pulpit is a vision. What will happen with time? With time, get go to the pulpit. Well, What? We will align towards the pulpit because from the start, I've been able to define the vision. But guess what? We, we, there's no vision, though, but we are very close. And there's no vision. After some time, go anywhere you want. What happens? We will drift because there's no vision. So it's not as if the feeling is not there. It's that the vision keeps you together. But before there can be vision and purpose, you must what? Discover yourself. If you want to go into politics in your future, you need to discuss it right now. And let's know that that's what I want to do. The pattern must be there. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So let's go to the next thing. I think we'll take the next one and we'll close. Glory to God. The next, the next quality for people that are single is that they must be whole. Let's turn to the book of Genesis. <laughs> they must be whole. They must be whole. The Bible says, therefore shall a man leave his father. He didn't say shall a boy. He said what? A man. Marriage is not for boys. It's for men. So if your mom is boy, you're not ready to marry. Don't date. He said, therefore shall what? A man. So he didn't say half man. A man. So there's no way you can think of being dating without thinking of what? Wholeness. It's two things. It's wholeness and maturity. That's why, if you, listen, if your parents are feeding you, you should not be dating. Especially for the man. If you're a man and your parents are feeding you, dating is not yet your class. You've not fed yourself. You want to feed somebody else. They will not say Valentine. Where will you get Valentine gift from? <laughs> glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. And, and, the, and this is where, you know, this is where I, I'm going to flip back a little to some of the things I taught on Wednesday because I thought, and this is where we're going to close. This is where we're going to close. See, if you're going to date, you need to have, you need to have 
you need to be whole. And maturity is part of the wholeness, but also emotional wholeness. So I want to say, it's okay, how do I know if I'm not emotionally whole? The first thing is this. How do you know people that are emotion, not emotionally whole? The first thing is this. Flashbacks. People that have emotional baggages always what? Have flashbacks. What a flashback? Flashbacks can be explicit or implicit. Explicit means it can be detailed. Implicit means you feel it, but you can't tell the reason why. Let me give an example. When Joseph saw his brothers come to Egypt, what did he do? The Bible says he ran into a room and he cried. Why did he cry? All the pains of what they did to him. In a moment, all the pains came back at once. Many of you, many of you, the way I know you have emotional baggage is that I see the way you hold on to money. It tells me something was wrong when you were young. You have flashbacks. In, in, in the third service, one lady was sharing, and it was a very touching story for all of us. And she said, just to let you know, I have to use drugs every day. He said, before I came here, I had to use drugs, anxiety drugs. I said, why? He said, because of the abuse that my father did to me, I can't stand in the public. I'm always afraid. That's flashback. So when you have flashback, the reason I keep saying this is this. If, if you don't deal with your damage, you will damage your children. You will damage things. And many of you, the reason why you are here is that because you know that you have this emotional struggle. Because they are vivid. So, for example, someone hugs you and there's a way you feel awkward. But the reason why you feel awkward is because something that happened in the past. And at that moment, a flashback has happened. Only that is, is, not, is, not, is not detailed, it's implied. Did you see the lady, Father Kemi, spoke about her son? The way you know you are healed is this. You talk about your past from the place of victory. You know, she looked and she doesn't regret having him. She looked at, oh, thank God this happened. I'm gone. The second way where you know you carry emotional baggages is this. This is the second way you will know you have emotional baggages. There, 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 there is, oh my God, this is so, so powerful. When people have emotional but they, they have, they can't control their emotion. You will just not instead of getting angry. Or sometimes it's crying. Small things make them cry. And the reason why is this. Where is the person with the, you know, we did this, on, we did this during the weekend. I, I want to show something. I, I want to show something. Yeah. So, so this guy is limping. This guy is limping. And as this guy is limping, watch this now. We see the symptom of limping, but we don't know what is limping. This is what people that smart do. When they are limping, they cover it up. But no matter how much you cover up your limp, it will still show that you are what? Limping. You are the only one that does not realize that your mess is smelling. We all know your mess is smelling. So limp, sir, limp, sir, limp, sir. So when you are dating, it shows that you are limping emotionally. When you are in a relationship, it shows you are limping emotionally. It, it shows you are limping emotionally. But the thing with limping is this. For you to be healed, you need to expose what is causing you to limp. But because we are smart people, what do we do? We dress we dress it. We cover it. How do you cover it? You use your career to cover it. I, I'm the MD of X and Y said similar. You say, I'm the, I have 2 million followers on Instagram. Listen to me. When I see the people on social media, I see their emptiness. I don't see their beauty. You don't understand. When someone is on Instagram and begins to post dollars, and you don't, the person doesn't have correct job, I just go, this is what I ask myself. What are you trying to cover? When you see people on Instagram that are literally naked, I'm like, why are you doing this? What is missing in your life that you're looking for? And what happens to people is that once they have a limp, they become very smart because they don't want to be needy. They cover it up. But if God is going to heal you, you're going to expose your limb. Can, can, you, can you turn this way, sir? You're going to expose your limb. The reason why is this. If you don't expose your limb, God cannot heal it. And single people, you have the best opportunity because you can fix yourself before someone comes on board. 
Some of us had to let the hard way. And that's why the second quality for every single person is that are you whole? Are you whole or you are broken? And you need to be honest with yourself. Are you broken? Some of you overreact. The way you like sex, there's something wrong. Can we be honest? Let me tell you something. Some of you are dating people that something has gone wrong with their mind. You don't know. The way the guy likes sex, there's something wrong. And maybe he's dealing with a low self-esteem and he has to brag. So when he finishes over the weekend, he will tell the guy, ah, the weekend, 10 girls. <laughs> See, how does a normal human being boast that he slept with 10 girls? And it's a boast. It's a genuine, sincere boast. And when you date that kind of person and you marry them, what do you expect? Trouble over trouble. And the reason why is that they have a wound. They have, they have an inner child wound that's not been healed. And some of you that ladies, the way it's easy to sleep with you, there's a problem. Hey! The thing has no gates. Once they just say, I love you, you, you just... <laughs> you love me, let's go. <laughs> you love me. Let's go. And, and the reason why is this. Some of you. And the reason why is this. You're looking for someone to love you. And you've attached love and sex together. Meanwhile, they may be connected. And they may what? Not be connected. Some of you grew up alone. By yourself. And now. You want to, there's a way you hold on. Have you not seen girls that hold on to a boyfriend? They have what they call attachment syndrome. They, the way they hold them, like, if you leave me, I will die. In fact, the way you know your partner has a problem is the things they say. If you leave me, I will die. Just know you are, this person has a problem. Ah, am I God? Glory to God. How do you know if you have emotional The first thing is a flashback. We spoke about Joseph. The second thing is that when you have emotional baggage, you begin to what? Overreact. Overreact. I've seen people. There was a girl. Her name is Bimbo. I, I mean, I've not seen any years. They brought her to me because when her boyfriend broke up with her, she was 21. She took a knife and began to cut her hand. I, I knew this was not that. I knew that this is from home. Ah, how can you be cutting your hand because your boyfriend? At 21, no. And the reason why is that when someone has a wound like this and you hit them, you, you maybe you mistakenly just say, you mistakenly just tap. You, you know, the reason why is that the response is more than the trigger. Because, not because the trigger is a lot, because there's a wound there already. So any small thing, any small thing, your, your husband comes home late, your boyfriend does not call. Have you not seen girls that every time they talk to their boyfriend, they must do video call? You better go and get some peace. With your video call, who will cheat with Chito? And, and where are you? Why are you not talking? Where do a video call? Show me the show me the room. Show me the room. So you keep thinking, and, and guess what? Because and, and this is the thing about suspicion. Because you keep suggesting it, even if he does not have it in his mind, you will put it in his mind. And it will tell you that what, what, what can happen? Maybe she thinks I do it already. If I do it, can it get worse than this? Let me go come and do it now. Deal with your inner wounds. Don't ruin yourself. Before you date someone, deal with your inner wounds. Or else you begin to bleed on the people that you love. Some of you here have lost precious relationship not because they didn't love you. Let me tell you something. Most people that delayed, it's not as if you didn't find someone that loved you. You were just not in a place you could accept love and incubate love and turn into marriage. The third sign of people that are struggling with emotional is that they have a heavy heart. Not just a heavy heart. Most of the time, they are always sad. When you talk to them, you just say, <sighs> what is <sighs> And the other thing you notice is that there's trust issues and loneliness. 
Thank you, sir. They have trust issues. They have loneliness. A lot of trust issues. I, I hope you not do this like this. Why are you hoping for the negative? I, you know, I, I, read a, I, I read a story today. I can't find it. A, a lady was going to get married. She said, that, Pastor, pray for me that nothing bad will happen on my marriage day. I said, why are you thinking this way? They have trust issues. There are men that have trust issues also. And it's nothing. They want your money. And what do you have in the world, Seth, now? Ah, all you have is a baby boy. Every All the girls you want, they want your money. Which money do you have, Seth, that will come on rest? But you don't want to admit that you have trust issues. And couple with trust issues, when people have trust issues, they love to stay alone. Men. Yeah. And that's why one of the other qualities you must want to date is that date someone that is willing to share his life, not someone that values loneliness. You know why? If you date someone that values loneliness, you will suffer for it. If you're a single person, learn to share your life. Because that's what you will do when you get married. What will you do? Sharing. So every day, I, I, I want to do it alone. I want to do it alone. Learn to share. If you're a single girl, get another person to live with you. Ah, I can't. You are not ready for marriage. You know why? What will happen when that person lives with you is what will happen when you have a boyfriend. The more you can deal with other people, the more you can deal with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Because at the end of the day, it's all friendship. Praise God. Let's close it. Let, let three people tell me how these signs of emotion luggage has affected their relationships and how we can help them today. People that have healed, people that are through the process, you can share and we'll close from there. Were you blessed today? So what are some things you have to discover? Number one, self-discovery. Number two, what? Maturity and emotional wholeness. The third one is what? Sharing. Openness and sharing. Men would date and want to leave as if they don't have a girlfriend. Share. Learn what? Sharing. Praise God. Okay, let's take some up. Hands up, please. Yeah, hands up. Thank you. Hi, my name is Abiodo. Yeah. Okay. So, I feel that I'm ugly, personally. Wow. I feel that I don't have the curves, the shape that other ladies have. Really? So, um, oftentimes, I try to get dresses that suit to make me look like that. Justice that suits? What does that mean? Like, dresses that suit me okay. to look like a female. Okay. So, um, I've been in past relationship, but I have somebody that is asking me out. He's a pastor, actually. And for every time he shows care, he's, I can't handle it. He, I, when he tells me I'm beautiful, I find it difficult to accept. But I think you are. When, when he says... Um, Slow down. I mean, <laughs> sincerely, sincerely, when I look at you, what will come to my mind is not ugly. <laughs> God forgive me, but there's some people I've seen, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, oh wow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. But when it comes to you, I the what comes to my mind is not ugly, you know. Yeah. So um, for every time, okay. Did you see how she's rejecting all of it? I wanted to notice that. Did you see? This is why you feel ugly. I want. I'm showing you why you feel ugly now. I'm showing you why you feel ugly now. Mm -hmm. Because every time they say that to you, you always repel it away. Yeah. It, listen to me. If someone says you are beautiful, say thank you. I am beautiful. Mm. Thank you. I am beautiful. Did you see how she struggled and started? I want to help you right now. Mm. I really think you're beautiful. Thank you. So I feel I'm not um, the regular standard of a female. No. So I. No. I act like. No. You are going to respond the way. You are going to respond. That mindset is going to shatter today. Hold on, relax. Just hold on, please. Bimbo, I think you are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you what? Thank you, I am beautiful. Bimbo, I think you are very... Bimbo, you have... My name very, is Biodo. Biodo, 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 Biodo. You have nice-shaped eyes. Thank the you. way your hair is, is really nice. You have this nice cheekbones. 
you look really, really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I am beautiful. Thank you. So the reason why is this. Let, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I'm stopping you from talking. Get up. I want you want me to help you, right? Get up. Get up. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't don't stop it. Let it go. This is the last time you're going to cry about this. This is the last time. Let it go. Let it go. Let's let it go. I was watching the first service, so I knew I was coming for the first, and I had the intention of talking about it so that I would feel better. But I don't just feel better. I want it to be changed. So any comment that anybody tells me, I just, you know, let it hand there. You see, she always blocks it off. Listen to me. If you want to change that, you must learn to what? Receive it. Where did this start from? Who told you you were not beautiful? It started somewhere. I can't even place it because we don't talk about it at home. Um, last week you were talking about people that... So, so you don't have to talk about it. You can not remember, but I'm going to help you get there. Mm. What, where do you go to and you feel as if I'm not beautiful? I, I was bullied while I was... So... Because I grew up in Lagos, I schooled in Ilori, and there was a day I was talking about where there was some feeling some part of the Tommy Lambert. So that day, I spoke to some of my um, schoolmates, and they shut me up. Like, um, you're, you're not the kind of person that's supposed to be saying. You know, they even formed a song. I can still remember it in my head. You know, so oftentimes, I try to look to suit anybody that I am with you know <laughs> that's see be honest, listen you felt that way because of what was said to you if something else is said to you you will change the way you feel let me ask you a question can, can we do this together everybody just be patient with me this is not spiritual be patient with me be honest, if you are beautiful how will you walk if you're walking to me. I walk like a guy. <laughs> you walk like a guy. I, I can tell you walk like a guy because, because what they said has become your identity. And you are acting in line with what? Your identity. But I'm trying to change your identity right now. Brother, listen to me. If you are really beautiful, you have an image of a beautiful person in your mind, right? Who is that person? Mention the name. Tell me, tell me. Mention the name. Okay. Um, that no name is coming to my head, but... No, no, no. You mention the name. Nobody mentioned the name for you. No, no, nobody supports okay. her. Okay. Um, Dockers. Who is Dockers? I, I met her in church. Um, she came for the third service. She came for the third service? Yeah. If you were as beautiful as Dockers, how would you walk if you meant to walk towards me? Walk, let me see. Take the microphone. How did that feel? Feel nice. <laughs> it feels really nice. It feels really nice. Remember, you're like Dockers now. Yeah. Walk and go and say hi to Pastor Ajika over there. Go, go and go and hug her. Walk like Dockers. Praise God. Listen, everybody. What you need to know is this. We walk by faith, not by sight. So we don't walk by what they say. We don't walk by what they feel. We walk by faith. Don't let the narrative of few people destroy your destiny. Just because of what people have said to her, they eventually succeeded in changing her identity. And now she's, she used to struggle. She used to struggle. I would like to pray for you. 
But the prayer is kind of different. So it's a prayer of deliverance. Hold the microphone. I wanted to open your eyes and just, you know, open your eyes. And say with me, say, Father. Father. You can close your eyes now. Say, Father. Father. Everything you made. Everything you made. Was very good. Was very good. Including me. Including me. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I'm wonderfully made. And wonderfully made. You don't make ugly. You don't make ugly. You make beautiful. You make beautiful. I receive that. I receive that. That's who I am. That's who I am. My life is beautiful. My life is beautiful. In and out. In and out. You made me beautiful. You made me beautiful. I accept it. I accept it. I reject every other com comment. I reject every other comment. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I rejoice in it today. I rejoice in it. Today's today. a new day. Today is a new day. It's a beginning of a new season. It's the beginning of a new season. Amen. Amen. You know, when you were walking here, you walked like Dockers. That's how you walked, right? When you walk into the auditorium, you walked in like the old Biodo. But it's not a new beginning. The ugly Biodo is now dead. See, 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 see. The ugly Biodo is now dead. This is now the beautiful Biodo. Beautiful Biodo. Can you walk back to your seats? Beautiful Biodo. Beautiful one. Beautiful, my God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful that we can get to help people. I'm so grateful. It's only God knows how many years she's been carrying that burden. And Jesus has set her free. And beyond when the enemy comes and tells you stories, it's Satan. It's too late. I've told 1,000 people watching that I am beautiful and I walk by faith, not by sight. So I don't walk by what I feel. Should I tell you what will happen? Even your body will start adjusting. I'm telling you, your body will start adjusting because your body will adjust to what you say. Praise God. Let me get one more comment, in maybe a question, a comment of how this pain is, and we'll get to pray. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. This is so good. Father, thank you, Lord. We just thank you for how you're using harvesters to change the world. Thank you, Lord, for people online that you're touching right now also. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the testimonies. Yeah, who wants to speak? You want to speak? There's a lady over there. I want to speak. There's a lady in the middle over here. And there's, yes, you can give her the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. You want to speak about how, what you've been through and, you know, um, the, the emotion of, trauma signs and how they've touched you yeah yeah good afternoon I have a question right so when you were talking about self-discovery i was yep. itching on my seat because it's one thing to have self-discovery and it's another thing for your family to decide because i i have a lot of friends who have failed marriages who are in marriages that they have no business what's your being question in. my question is how do people who come from homes whereby their parents decide for them. Like, you, you, you have to get married before 30. You have to get married. How do your parents decide for you? I don't know, because you can Because I don't know also. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Peer, peer, um, Let me tell you something. Pressure. The only reason why they marry is that they just want to marry. You just, someone just pushed you to do what you want to do. That's all. At 30 years old, you can't make up your mind what you want. That's why you should not marry. Because you're a baby. At 30 years old. You should tell your parents, Mom, if you're the one deciding when I should marry, I should have a baby. No, before 30. Before 30. Even before 30. That's why they should not marry. I'm telling you, you know, some of you, some of you, your parents decide what you should do. I, I don't understand what you should do. Those are... Let's move from parents' question. I don't want to enter a very slippery area. Because I, I don't understand what you mean. They tell you who to marry and what to what. What does that mean? 
Most parents will die in 40 years, in, in 30, 20 years of your marriage. In 10, between the first 10, 20 years, most parents will die. Who will you blame for your failure? The graveyard. I understand what you've said, but I also don't understand it. You know, but because it's not you, I'm able to answer the question because maybe someone that is happening to tell me that I can understand what they're saying. All right. Yes. Who wants to share? You want to share something? This lady in front here. Yeah. This lady. No, 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 no. This lady in front here. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, blessing by name. I come out from the family that whereby none of my siblings are educated. Not that I'm, I'm going that down. I try to pick up my educational career by selling things in the market. So one day I was in church and they were having a program in our church. I attended for Catholic church in the village. So my choir master then now said, they are, like shut me up. You need to tell me in brief what you said, yes. Okay, that none of my siblings finished what they have ever started. And ever since then, I couldn't continue my school. I couldn't pick up my so what is your question? My question is, because of what that lady said, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Abudun yeah. said, will it ho make, me feel inf make me feel down of my past? And I always keep on to that past. I couldn't, anytime I want to pick. What, what is the past now? My uh, academic academics. section. So, so you, don't have a, you don't have a degree? Yeah, I have a degree on business, I mean OND. So okay. ever since I finished up, I couldn't have any more urge to further Anytime I want to do it, I almost remember that word. So what is your question? My question is, how can I pick up myself back? Like, most times if I want to do it, I feel down. I feel down greater. I feel that we have never done this. You've never we done can, this before? Yes, we can't okay. do it. Okay. Okay, good. It's a very simple thing. Which of your friends, all your friends don't have a degree, right? They all have a degree. We, they all serve. The one we started, we serve. No, no, no. I never said, who did you start with? Who are your close friends? Mention three people that are close to you. Okay. I have a friend, Joshua. He's done with Who are your degree. close friends? Who are your close friends? You spoke to them yesterday, day before yesterday, last week. Yes. Who are your close friends? You see them regularly. Yes, you sir. eat with them. Mention their names. Okay. Etima. Etima. The second one is what? Joshua. Joshua. Third uh, one is what? Glory. Glory. What does Glory have? She has a business admin as well, HBSC. BSC. She served. She served, yes. Etima, she's married and she served as well. She served. What does she have? She has a um, political science. Okay, the third person. And the third person is going for service this year. It's going for service this year? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, um, who are those around you that do not have degrees? Who do you stay with? I stay alone, but I brought my mom to Lagos. You brought your mom to Lagos? Yeah. Um, this week, who did you talk to the, to the most? Sir? Who did you talk to most this week? Who do I? Did you talk to the most this week? Okay, I, I talked to, the, I have a, um, a, lead, a woman I, I normally spoke with. That she one? Was, I have a woman, a spiritual mother who I talk to, who always encouraged me to who do more. Who always encouraged you, okay. So basically, you're asking yourself that how do you go to the next? So let me say something to you. Just a simple thing you have to do. There's a fear you have Look for someone that can hold you accountable and you go to school. Okay. Look for what? Someone that can hold you accountable and you go to school. Just for someone. Thank you. Who is, who is going to do it amongst your three friends? I'll talk to Mr. Jemals. Mr. Jemals. Yeah. What are you going to go? Do you have what to go to? Do you, do you have what it takes to go for your HND? Yes. You have what it takes? I'll try. You know. Yeah. So, so why can't you start? What is the next HND set? I, I actually make inquiry for National Open University. Okay. And that will be next year, February. That will be next year. So what will stop you from going? I'm working on my finances. You're working on your finances. Okay, yes. that's one. So what finance do you need to get to make you go? How much is National Open University? For starting, I, I actually find out the... HND degree. Yeah. How much is that? I have to start from year two. Yeah. And everything needs to be 200K. 200K. So, how much do you have? Have you set aside for that? I have 120 for it. You have 120 for to that. To start off. Okay. So, who's going to give out 200K to help her do that? Two people to start. Just two people. <laughs> just two people. Just yeah. one. Yeah, that's fine. We, we have two already. No, no. We, we, we have more. So, yes. Tayo, let me get their numbers. And this is what they're going to do. This pastor is in charge. 
Once you get into school, they're going to give you the money. You don't have to use your 200k, they'll give the money to pay. Is that okay? Thank you very much, Judge. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, um, the, the reason why is that that's what life is. We're supporting one another. Yeah. The country is bad. But there's no country without the people. What do we do for one another? And that's what church is. Easily I could have access to pay for that as a church. But I, I just said that some of you give your offerings. You need to know what your offerings does. So this is what your offering does. It gives you the opportunity. Because you heard Father Kevin say, you will help that. And other people you help. That's what we use the money. It's an opportunity to really help people. We may not be able to show pictures because people are private. But that's what a great church does. When people give, it's an opportunity to really help. And sometimes, and this is why you need to go to a great church. My brother in blue, come. You just need to, you need, just need to have someone. Yeah, I just want to hold your hands. You just need ha to have someone that can hold your hands. Sometimes this is what people need in life. Not a sermon, not prayer. Just someone that will hold your hands. That's all they need in life. Praise God. Can we pray? Will you stand on your feet? Let's pray.